The Rangers' worst season in nearly half a century is finally over. It's the final weekend recap, looking at what the Rangers did this final weekend of the season, what's going on with them this season, and you know what to look for a little bit in this postseason coming up on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's go. You are Locked On Rangers. Daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On to the Texas Rangers. This is episode number 462 of the Locked On Texas Rangers podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Rangers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Bryce Patrick. It is Monday. October 4th, the Rangers are 60 and 102, and they will be for the next six months at least, unless you count Cactus League stats, which, you know, you shouldn't because they don't count for anything except for baseball being back in our lives. And Rangers baseball won't be back in our lives for quite a while, but that's okay because the Rangers are really bad this year. They have the third overall pick in next year's draft. They almost goofed it away. They almost did, but with the loss today, they insured themselves a number three overall pick where I'm hoping they will get second baseman from Texas Tech, Jace Young, younger brother of Josh Young. But that, that's a that's a time, a story for another time. The leading news from this weekend is Tom Grieve, or Tag, as he's affectionately, affectionately known by Rangers fans, a guy who has been with the organization for, I believe it's 48 years. He is an absolute legend. He's been in the broadcast booth for going on 27 seasons, and he announced on today's game that next season will be his last season, which makes me incredibly sad um, because this guy has been a part of Rangers broadcast for as long as I've been, I think basically since I've been alive, and definitely at least since I've been paying attention to baseball. He was on the broadcast of those first teams that made me fall in love with sports, maybe fall in love with baseball back in 2010, 2011, 2012. He was there every night. He and Busby were just chopping it up, having an absolute blast for years and years and years. And then as he started to get on fewer and fewer broadcasts, it was always a special treat when you realize, oh, it's tag this series. We've got tag and Dave Raymond or tag and whoever else is, is doing things. Um, he's just an absolute delight. He is been a part of this organization as a player, as a front office member, as a GM, as now a broadcaster for most of the younger generation's experience with them. And he is just one of the best people in the game. He has had an incredible career and he deserves all the cookies, all the flowers, all the praise that he can get um, because this man is a legend. And gosh, it's going to be such a bummer in 2023 if the Rangers do start competing again and we won't get to have the occasional, oh, look, it's tag this series moment. I know I'm going to treasure every single one of these Tom Grieve games that we get next year. I definitely made sure to treasure all the ones that we got for these final six games of the season. And uh, you better make sure to do the exact same thing for him next year. He's a legend. There is, I would say, no one that is more you know, intertwine with this franchise. There are surely some bigger faces of the franchise, some more memorable players, but there's nobody who's been a bigger part of this franchise. No one who's done more for this franchise. No one's been with this franchise for longer. I mean, this guy has given most of his life and he's lived a long, very full life. And most of it has been as a member of the Texas Rangers organization in some form or fashion. Um, I'm so glad that he has given all these years to us as a broadcaster when his time in the front office has, had been done. And, you know, it's been an absolute gift. All the story times we get with him, all the fun little moments, the random excitement buzz in his voice, time from the voice gets super high pitched for absolutely no reason. He is just an absolute delight on the broadcast and in every way, shape and form. So tag, enjoy your off season. Uh, make sure you're bringing your a game next year. Like I'm sure you will be like you always have been in every facet of your career um, because we're going to miss the heck out of you once you're gone. Don't be a stranger. Please just show up randomly and just break into the broadcast booth. Say this is your last year, but just like show up randomly and just take over the mic for an inning or two just for fun, just for fun. Nobody would bet. 
Not a single person would be mad. If they are, then like, who cares? They're not important anyway. But let's look at this final series of the season. It was a losing series. The Rangers lost two out of three to the Cleveland Guardians. They're the Guardians now. They played their final game in 2021. So now they're the Cleveland Guardians. So I'm going to call them that for, well, until they change their name again in 100 years or 50 years or however long because the Guardians is kind of weird. But you know what? I dig it. It's better than the team they had now. I would have rather than be the Spiders, but, you know, we'll live with it. First game Friday night. Uh, not a great night for Spencer Howard. Really not great in his final start of the season. Um, but again, we're not really looking at the box score. We're looking at pitch count. He threw 73 pitches, which is the most he's thrown this year, uh, but only 42 of those were strikes. He walked three in three and two-thirds innings, only struck out two in just under four innings. Um, Grant, he allowed eight runs. Only five of those were earned because not of an error in the field but because of his own wild pitch. And I feel like if the error is yours as a pitcher, those runs that are counted as unearned should be earned, whether it's a wild pitch or a throwing error or a fielding error by the pitcher of not like covering a base. Those should be earned runs on your ledger. Um, allowed two home runs in that span. Colby Allard came in and did a really nice job in mop-up relief duty, um, which, you know, it sounds weird, but I think that might be his best role moving forward. Uh, three and a third innings came in, um, was able to settle things down a little bit, only allowed one run, struck out four. Um, just a solid outing for him. Jarrell Cotton worked a uh, scoreless inning. So did Josh Spores and struck out a pair as well. Got his ERA under four on the season. Offensively, it was a decent day at the plate for uh, quite a few people with three hit game for Nathaniel Lowe. Isaiah kind of left shouts to him. He had his eighth home run of the season. I said earlier, I didn't think that he was going to hit another home run this season. Um, I think I said it last week even, but nope, he did it. By gosh, he did it. Um, and this is one home run in the last uh, 30 games. Yeah, he did it. Um, he also accomplished a very nice feat of playing the most games ever in a season for a Hawaiian born player. Um, a very proud moment for him. This is his first full season as an everyday starter. I mean, last season he was technically a full season, but like not an actual full season. Um, so <laughs> um, it's a little bit different for him now. Um, also, I love that immediately before the postseason even started, immediately MLB.com starts switching over every player's split sliders to um, the postseason, even the ones that are not in the postseason. Hey, MLB, we're not there yet um, because we don't get a game 163 because all the AL wildcard teams hate chaos, except for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, shouts to you guys for trying to make a game 163 happen, trying to make a three way or a four way tie happen. Um, but the other teams, Mariners, Yankees, Red Sox just didn't want to participate in all that fun and, you know, make some joyous craziness for the rest of us. So we're not getting a game 163 in either the AL or the NL, which is fine. We'll live with it. I mean, we we'll mad about it and I'll moan and complain about it for a little bit more. But, you know, eventually I'll get over it because it'll be playoff baseball this week. So I'm going to take a quick break and come back and look a little, a little bit more at this final series. What impressed me and, you know, a few surprise Rangers stats leaders at the end of the season. First, this word from sponsors. This episode is brought to you by DirecTV Stream. Does this sound familiar? You got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friend's blog for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. This episode is also brought to you by GetUpside. Hey, Rangers fans. This is Bryce Patrick here with an incredible app for everyone who buys gas. They need to know about GetUpside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use promo code BASEBALL and get a bonus $0.25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's up to $0.50 cents cash back. 
Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free. Use promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making uh, as much as two to $300 a month in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon or another brand. Just download the free GetUpside app. Use promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. That's promo code BASEBALL. Now, let's look a little bit more at this series on Saturday night. Of course, the game that I was most sure that the Rangers were going to lose. Um, Jordan Lyle goes out there. And you know what? <laughs> he has a heck of a game. He has an absolutely amazing start. Um, and you know what? Props to him. Seven innings of one-run baseball, only allowed two hits, one walk, one run, seven innings, eight strikeouts. Not a single home run was given up by this man. Good on him because he's a man who has a penchant for giving up home runs, but he didn't do it in this game. Um, completely outmatched the opposing starter, uh, Tristan McKenzie, who is a guy who has you know a lot of upside. Definitely a very inconsistent kind of guy. Um, but McKenzie only went four innings, um, allowed four walks, four hits, four earned runs, two home runs, and just two strikeouts in this one. Will Cahoon has his sixth home run of the season. Jonah Heim hit his 10th bomb of the season. Yes, a multi or a double digit home run hitting catcher on this Rangers baseball team. I didn't think I'd see it for quite a while, but I saw it. Jonah Heim also had a pair of walks in this game. Great game for him. Andy Ibanez had a hit and a walk and uh, a pair of runs in this one. Charlie Culberson had his 15th double of the season. Um, overall, pretty solid day for the Rangers. Uh, seven runs batted in on the day for the seven total runs. And they pretty much had this one in the bag. In the bag from, you know, they got their first run in the bottom of the first inning, did allow a run in the third inning, came back with the three spot in the bottom of the fourth inning and put this one to bed with three runs in the eighth inning just to make sure that they had some breathing room for their bullpen, which did a very, a very good job. Spencer Patton had a perfect shutout inning. Brett Martin did allow one run and three hits in his inning of work, but, you know, it's fine. Brett Martin has done great stuff this season and continued to be doing great stuff. Um, Jordan Lyles closes out his season and possibly his Rangers career with one of his better starts on the season. Definitely had some ups and downs, some mostly downs, but uh, there were some positive starts there. He did have some pretty good starts. His last two um, were, you know, decent starts. Um, before this one, he had a six and two thirds innings uh, outing where he only allowed three runs against uh, Baltimore, which, you know, is Baltimore. He did get roughed up a little bit by the White Sox, but he's had some good outings this year. So, I don't know. I'm pretty darn sure this guy is not going to be on the Rangers team next season. Had a super weird season. Wasn't going to be a part of the starting rotation. Then complained about it a little bit. And the Rangers were like, sure, that'll work. We don't really have any other options. And uh, it turned out they didn't. He was very valuable for the Rangers this season. 180 innings. Um, one of very few qualifiers. There's just not that many players that actually threw enough innings to qualify. Um, for, you know, among major league leaders in the 162 game season, it takes quite a few innings to uh, qualify. So, uh, yeah, he's up there with um, some of the best, um, some of the best in baseball. I think only 15 last time I checked were qualified. Um, so, I mean, he did it. Um, <laughs> a decent season for him. Um, not quite in the top 10 of, um, Innings pitched in uh, Major League Baseball, but I believe he was top 10 um, in innings pitched in um, the American League. Let me double check this. Robbie Ray led the American League with 193 innings. And uh, yep, there we are. Jordan Lyles, 180 innings pitched. So number six in innings pitched for the American League. That is a valuable thing for this team. They needed it. Um, other guys who were eating quite a bit of innings include Mike Fultinevich, who came out of the pen for the back half of this season, or I guess the back month-ish of this season, ended up pitching 139 innings. Colby Howard pitched 124 and two-thirds innings. Uh, Dane Dunning finished with 117 innings. And Kyle Gibson who hasn't been on this team since the clock, or I guess the calendar turned to August is fifth on this team with 113 innings. Um, overall, not not great for 
most of those big innings eaters. Um, Dane Dunning didn't have a super great finish to his season, but I'll be getting that into ju- into that in just a second. Um, but first, this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Do you know that Built Bar has a million different delicious flavors? They're absolutely fantastic. They're all good for you. They're all fantastic tasting. If you don't know what you like, you can get a mixed box. You'll get two of each of the nine flavors. Um, some of those flavors include cherry barcia, raspberry mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. They are fantastic. They are delicious. They're good for you. And like I said, they're delicious. They're healthy. Delicious. All these things that you want in food, they have them. 17, 18 grams of protein in most bars, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar and net carbs. Also, all the flavors are amazing. They're all tasty, tasty, and they're all healthy. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Now, let's look at some surprise leaders on this Texas Rangers team. Some guys who you might expect, some guys you might not expect. Um, for some random stats leaders on this team, I've said it once and I've said it, I will say it many, many times. The most shameful thing in my browser history is the amount of times I have looked up the 2021 Texas Rangers on baseball reference. It's downright shameful. I am embarrassed of it. I know it's my job, but it's it's still, it's just you know, got to feel a little bit of shame at looking at this. That and the 2014 Texas Rangers baseball reference page. That That's just straight up shameful. That's not even my job. That's just straight up shameful. Um, but according to baseball reference, who would you guess is the war leader for this team? Is it Dulles Garcia? Is it IKF? Is it Nathaniel Lowe? Nope. It's Joey Gallo with a 4.2 war season. Joey Gallo is still in first place, coming at second as IKF with a 4.0 war season. And Adoles Garcia at a 3.8 war season. Adoles was at, I believe, 4.0, and then his um, his game regressed just a little bit. Next, all the way down, is Kyle Gibson at 3.1. Nathaniel Nathaniel Lowe coming with a 2.3 war season. Really solid. Also, in seventh place, Ian Kennedy, a 1.1 war season, which is more, or I, I guess tied with Charlie Culberson a little bit ahead of him, a little bit ahead of Nick Solek, Yanni Hernandez, Dane Dunning, and Joe Barlow. Joe Barlow coming in at 12th on this team with a 0.7 war, even though he is a reliever who did not get called up till I believe July. So really solid stuff there for him um, in a very short time span. Also, I believe he was on the IL for a little bit there too. So uh, that's, that's really telling um, about this team um, that these are their war leaders. Also, um, yeah, Charlie Culberson didn't play in all that many games either. And he's still up there. 90 games for him on the season. Andy Abania is being in the top 10 um, with only 76 games this season. It just, it goes to show this team was uh, not super great. Um, definitely some rough outings for them there. But we're getting to some of the positive stuff. Yeah, we're bringing out the good stuff. Um, I don't know why it's going to um, only qualifiers. Um, but uh, we're going to try and go fix that because... That ruins some of the fun of this. If you want to go only look at people who are in the qualifiers, um, the worst OPS plus on this team. Um, it's a several way tie, but I, I got to give the, the crown to Jordan Lyles, who only hit in three games, six plate appearances, six at bats, and five strikeouts. Did not reach base at all. That's an OPS plus of negative 100. Negative 100. That's about fitting. Um, but if you look at the OPS leader, who would you think it is? You think it's Joey Gallo? Adolis Garcia? Nathaniel Lowe? Jonah Heim? Andy Abania, surely? Nope. It is none other than the illustrious, the one, the only, John Hicks, coming in with a 935 OPS in just 10 games until they straight up cut him. Four home runs and 31 plate appearances for this guy. Um, slug 677 for the season. Good on him. OPS plus of 146 um, for the regular leaders. That um, leader is uh, Joey Gallo with 869. For the people who are still on this team, that leader is Nathaniel Lowe at 771. Not where he wanted it. Still finished the year with 18 home runs. A solid total. Would like to be 20. 
would have liked to see his OPS at 800. But, you know, that's fine. Still very respectable, very solid. 80 walks for Nathaniel Lowe on the season. Honestly, a really good output form and on base of 357. That is really good. Slugging at 415, just got to get that up there on an OPS plus of 113. So that says he's above average offensively. They'd finish the season with 24 doubles, three triples, um, and eight stolen bases without getting caught. Still kind of wild that he did that, um, but congrats to him. Good on him. Decent season. Definitely not enough to guarantee him to be the starter next year, um, but definitely enough to give him every opportunity and have a head start to be the starter next year. Now, let's look on the pitching side. Um, we already talked about the um, ERA. Um, actually, no, no. We talked about the innings pitched leaders. Um, but let's talk about the ERA crown for this team. Um, goes to none other than the one, the only, actually a two-way tie. Um, but I'm going to give it to the guy with um, the most outings, Charlie Culberson. A zero ERA in two innings this year. Um, finished off two games. So, you know. He's got that closer stuff. Brock Holt also tied with a zero ERA in his one inning of work. Um, an ERA plus of, uh, yeah, they did not factor it in because he did not pitch in enough games. Um, but shouts to them coming in, closing things out. When the going got tough, the Rangers knew they could turn to Brock Holt and Charlie Culberson. Brock Holt actually posted on his Instagram saying, well, I pitched really well this year. So um, congrats to him on having a sense of humor. Uh, would love to have both these guys back. They're great clubhouse guys, um, great bench guys, can play a bunch of different positions. Obviously, good vets in the clubhouse have been on winning teams before. This was obviously not that, um, but I know they meant a lot to the Rangers organization and brought some really good stuff to this team. Now, let's look at the saves leader. Um, yep. It's still Ian Kennedy with 16 saves in 32 games pitch. Joe Barlow got close, though. Joe Barlow got really close. In 31 games, he had 11 saves, um, basically from the time he took over as a closer. He was not going to be denied. Finished the season with a, a 285 ERA plus in 29 innings, um, struck out 27, um, only allowed 0 0.6 home runs per nine innings, 3.7 hits per nine innings, 3.7 walks per nine innings and 8.4 strikeouts per nine. So great stuff from him. Brett Martin into the year with 3.18 ERA. Josh Spores got his ERA down under four to end the season. 3.97. Pretty good stuff from him. I think we'll see him back in the pen next year. Um, also, shout out to Matt Bush who came back after being out for the entire season. Only pitched in I believe three games the first week of the season, um, and then came back and pitched on the last day of the season. He's probably going to get some kind of contract next year, probably some kind of non-tender or non-guaranteed um, spring training deal. But then he came back. He was hitting 96. Um, looked pretty decent stuff and one inning of work. So congrats to him on working his way back. Hopefully he can be a part of this pen next year. When he's right, he has got some really nasty stuff. Um, so, And the Raiders aren't really in a position to just outright turn away. So. I don't know. Looking forward to what we're going to see from him next year. Also, remember, John King comes back next year. Um, he's missed basically the entire back half of the season, but ended with uh, a 352 ERA in 27 games and uh, 46 innings. A really good multi-inning relief guy um, and made some really solid um, strides forward this year. Dennis, Sant Dennis Santana, a 25-year-old who I didn't think much of, um, Honestly, a lot of the times when he came into games, I'm like, all right, well, he'll just be fine. That's his job is to be fine. End of the year when uh, just one out shy of 40 innings in 39 games, a 363 ERA, an ERA plus of 121. Um, walked quite a few per nine innings, uh, just under five, um, and didn't quite strike out a guy per inning. But the stuff was solid. He's young. Um, he's got years of control, so I don't know. We'll see. I think he might earn a spot in the pen next year. He might be one of those, you know, last man out kind of guys. Um, but definitely impressed me much more than I thought he would. Um, Jarrell Cotton, also a guy who hasn't pitched in the big leagues for such a long time. He's still 29 years old. Um, had a 352 ERA in 23 games. Um, pitched just under 31 innings. Pretty solid multi-inning relief guy. Um, 
and uh, previous season. Now, I want to close just looking very briefly at this final game of the season. The Rangers were handed their loss number 102, and it was closed out by a guy who threw 102, a 102 mile an hour cutter in Emmanuel Classe. Also, a uh, shout out to Anthony Ghost, a guy who played for the Rangers in the minor leagues just a little bit, a guy who was a um, a position player for most of his career um, and never made the big leagues and then comes in this year and is throwing gas. I think he hit uh, 101 and it didn't look all that difficult for him. Um, and he was just absolutely throwing gas. The 31 year old is finally in the big leagues. i um, had a 135 ERA in just shy of seven innings this year a whip of 0.60 in those uh, just under seven innings this year. So maybe he'll be back um, and congratulations to him. A guy who was a second round pick for the Phillies um, and just couldn't quite make it work. A guy who had a lot of speed and a big arm. And now that big arm is playing on the mound. So shouts to Anthony Ghost. Um, but Dane Dunning, uh, he came in, he needed to go five and a third innings and allow one run, get a no decision to get, the um actually no i believe he needed to get a win yeah he did need to get a win to finish the season if he went five and a third innings allowed one run and the rangers had the lead and ended up winning this game he could have finished with a 420 era and a six and nine record instead he got kind of blown out of the water three innings of work um got a hit for five hits four earned runs um four runs all of those were earned did walk a guy did strike out three Ends the year five and ten with a five forty one ERA. Neither of those are the funny numbers. Um, Fulton Nevich also got touched for a home run and a pair of runs in his two innings of work. Matt Bush came in, worked the scoreless inning. Dennis Santana came in, worked a perfect scoreless inning as well. Um, as did um, Derek Anderson. Gerald Cotton came in and worked a shutout inning, but the Rangers' offense was not doing very much at all. Nick Solak had a multi hit game to finish the season had half the Rangers hits in this one. Jose Trevino also had a hit and so did any Ibanez, but just one walk and just not a whole lot of base runners there. Um, that walk was also worked by Nick Solak. So, uh, yeah, not a great, not a great one to finish the year out on, but just kind of fitting, um, with how this team performed this year, but there'll be a lot of fun stuff coming later on this week. I'll be talking about postseason baseball and you know how it has ties to the Rangers. Obviously, not with the Rangers being in it. But if you had told me at the beginning of the season that the Rangers would play as many postseason games as the A's, the Blue Jays, and the Padres combined, I would say one of two things happened. First off, I'd probably smack you in the face and call you a liar. Um, and then I'd say one of either two things happened. Either someone used all their monkey's paw wishes that the Rangers would win the world series this year and it would come at a terrible, terrible price in the future. But I wouldn't really care about that because the Rangers would win a world series and probably Joey Gallo would be on that team. Um, or some horrible plague had befallen all three of those other teams in that players were losing appendages. Um, people were just up and quitting baseball or the teams just ceased to exist. Neither of those things happened but it was still a very, very weird season. Um, and you know what? The Rangers are playing just as many games as the Padres and the Blue Jays um, and the A's. So, you know what? The Rangers were bad. They missed the playoffs. But at least they let you know very early on that this was going to be the case. I'll be back with more episodes of Locked on Rangers this week, hopefully breaking down the end of this minor league season, what players stood out, and all kinds of other more good stuff, including postseason content coming from me later on this week. So thank you guys so much for listening to Lock On Rangers. Thank you for making Lock On Rangers your first listen of the day. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.